So, we are now continuing and talking about how we can measure resonance and anti-resonance and the uh, wonderful things that go along with that. So, uh, I'm, we're actually going to do a small experiment. We're going to have a function generator, which has an internal impedance, uh, and that's going to be connected to ground. And then we're going to have a measurement, we'll call that channel 1, voltage measurement here. We'll have our piezo element, we'll draw as a little crystal dude. And then we're going to have a resistor, which is 50 ohms. And then we're going to have ground. Okay. And if we apply an alternating volt, alternating um, uh, field, I mean alternating electric field at the frequency, arbitrary frequency, we're going to get, and, and we sweep the frequency, we're going to get that curve that we're talk I was talking about, that impedance graph. Um, you know. We're going to get those resulting values. Putting in a certain voltage gives you a current according to this. And remember that impedance is equal to voltage times the current. So essentially, uh, if we put in a steady voltage, voltage divided by the impedance equals the current. So for a low impedance and the same voltage, we're going to have a really high current. So this is basically what it's telling us is somewhat of a transfer function, inverse transfer function between voltage and current. So low impedance, high current for the same voltage. So over a resistor, this is always true. Voltage equals current times the resistor. So we can measure the voltage of channel 2, which we're going to measure right here, channel 2. We can measure the voltage. We know the voltage. And we know the, we know the resistance, so we can measure the current. So we always know the current going through the system. And if we subtract channel 1 and channel 2, we'll get, the, we'll get the voltage over just the piezoelectric element. Because right now when we measure channel 1, it's measuring according to ground. That's how oscilloscope probes work, generally work, is that they measure uh, with reference to ground and you put your plug on, you put your ground plug on the ground. All right. Um, so now let's take a look at the actual setup, which is conveniently right here. We have the function generator. We have our trusty oscilloscope with too many channels enabled. Disappear my channel. Don't want to disappear. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so we have this voltage source coming from here. It's going in from this red wire. It's from, from this red wire. It's going into uh, this piezoelectric element which is wired in from the bottom electrode and the top electrode is going to the other wire which continues to this resistor. So just like this, we're just measuring um, this circuit, the system, and this is the ground. Uh, now we must uh, properly connect uh, these probes, which we have here. So for the first probe, we're going to put it over the entire voltage load. It goes from the resonance point I mean from the uh, high volt, uh, from across the entire system. The other one will just go over the resistor and, um, and this will be telling us the voltage. Uh, I mean this will be telling us the current. This is why it's very useful. So we have our complete circuit which I drew here. And as we can see, or as we perhaps can't see, that's much better. Alright. As you can see the yellow is the um, the yellow curve, which I'm going to bring up a little bit, this is the um, voltage. It's auto set. Okay, much better. So that's the voltage, and this channel 2 and channel 3 and 4, I'm just going to like hide down here. I'm not going away for some reason. And this channel right here, channel 2, which I just showed, which is really noisy, that's the current. So right now we're at off resonance. We're at uh, 1 kilohertz, as you can see on the top screen, on the, on the function generator. So we're, we have a really small voltage, and, 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 the, and the impedance is really high for, low, uh, for, for, for a capacitor at low frequencies. It's almost like a, uh, like a closed system. So therefore, let's increase the frequency. And on this function generator, we want to... And we're at one amp, so we're going to increase the frequency and see what happens to the uh, current. So the current's increasing like a capacitor would li uh, inversely with the frequency, but at that resonance point, the impedance dips down a lot. So we're not at resonance yet. You're going to notice what, what, when we get to resonance. See, it's increasing linearly like we would expect. 
It's sort of starting to pick up though, isn't it? It feels like it. Oh, there we go. We're getting close to resonance. It's getting really big now. If you can see this blue curve, um, it's getting really big. That's resonance. That was resonance. See? Let me show you what. Let me show you. This is before resonance, after resonance, before resonance, after resonance, before resonance, after resonance, negative 90 degrees phase like a capacitor. In between resonance and anti-resonance, the phase is like 90-ish, or it's it increases to its maximum at least. Then after that, we're still at negative 90, and now, watch, it's going to go backward. Now we're, we're incre increasing the frequency, if you can see, and it's going to go from negative 90 before resonance to in between resonance and anti-resonance. 90-ish, it's get to its maximum. Uh, and then it goes back down to negative 90, it passes the anti-resonance point. So as I said, the maximum current is the resonance point. So we need to get a little bit closer because this one kilohertz step is too much. It's jumping over the entire resonance portion. So let's um, let's 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 now adjust the kilohertz by uh, the the frequency by 100 and lower this scale. And so we're gonna look for that zero degrees phase. Or you can look for the maximum uh, current, which we're going to show here. We're going to go to uh, measure. And we're going to measure the RMS. And we can go channel 2, measure RMS. And it, as I mentioned, in order to measure the voltage across the channels, you have to subtract channel 1. Oh, boy. Channel one from channel two, and that's going to give you the R. That's going to give you the actual uh, vo uh, voltage across the sample, and so we're going to measure actually the RMS value for that math. So right now it's at 500 millivolts, 5450 millivolts. So we're going to increase it to 51.8 kilohertz. That's 472, 470. So right now, we are showing that it's a little tricky sometimes because when you're changing the uh, frequency, you're changing the impedance. Is because the our, our function generator generator has its output impedance, it's short of changing the voltage we're practically applying over the sample. So what we're going to do for this case, normally you can divide the voltage uh, by the current. So you can divide basically channel 1 uh, by, um, well we can do that. Well we can divide, we can look for the lowest impedance and we can divide channel 1 by channel 2. Oh boy, okay. Let's just stick with this way. Uh, but, okay, let's stick with this way. So anyway, so we, we have this zero degrees phase, which is not true for all materials. Um, just because, based off simplicity, I'm going to use this zero degrees phase as the uh, resonance point. But it's not necessarily, not necessarily the case. Uh, but if you do have a zero degrees phase, then it's a, it's a good sign that you can use it. So let's draw. Let's let's make out our make out our impedance. Our impedance is uh, over the math channel. We have 460 millivolts, and over the R channel two, we have 137 millivolts. Uh, but that's over a 50 ohm resistance. So practically, you can multiply by two and divide by ten and divide by 100. So it would be like 274 uh, uh, millivolts over 100, it would be like over 100 ohms, which would be 0. Point, so it would be about, I think, 2 microvolts, not 2 microvolts, but anyways, that's not the important part we're doing right now. If you divide the voltage by the current, uh, you can come up with the resonance uh, impedance here, where the phase is 0 or the impedance is a minimum and you get the impedance by dividing the voltage uh, 
by the current, and the practical voltage applied is over the math channel, and the practical current applied uh, is the uh, voltage over the resistor uh, divided by the resistance value for the current. So let's go to the anti-resonance. So we're increasing the frequency, increasing the frequency, and we see the uh, uh, current decrease. The voltage is approximately constant here. So now we can't see it, oh, so we can't see channel 2, so we got to increase it. Approximately at this point, at zero phase, we're getting the minimum impedance. I'm oh, sorry, the maximum impedance, uh, which corresponds to the lowest voltage, the lowest current value, which is the highest impedance. So that's about, that's at 54.7 kilohertz. That's the uh, uh, anti resonance point. The resonance point, as we were seeing earlier, let's go backward. Let's let the current expand a little bit. and that is approximately like 51.7 so you can use these values to calculate the coupling factor, piezoelectric coupling factor uh, using the equation for a K31 sample because this is a K31 sample right here as we see this piezoelectric material uh, where is it? here we go this soldered you don't have to solder it though, you can have a sample holder Okay. So this tells you how to find the resonance and the anti-resonance frequencies. You can again uh, find these values here uh, and divide by and divide one by the other, and then by doing that you'll find the impedance value. And you have to use the math because you're using a resistor. But however, if you're using a current probe, you wouldn't have to use this math channel. You can directly measure current. But however, in that case, it would be difficult to measure the anti-resonance. So the good thing about this resistor method is that you can measure resonance and anti-resonance uh, using a similar circuit. Um, but otherwise, uh, it's a little more challenging uh, to find the uh, resonance and anti-resonance because of this math part. So I hope I showed you how to measure the resonance and anti-resonance frequency and also measure the impedance. Uh, of these, once you get to these points, uh, the more reliable thing is to measure the try to get the maximum impedance, try to get the minimum impedance, but that would be too cumbersome to do in the video right now. Uh, but you can get the values just by dividing uh, the math channel by the cur current channel it's, uh, and then dividing that by the resistance because the current needs to be scaled according to the resistance because you're measuring actually a voltage over that resistor. Uh, if you're measuring, depending on your voltage value, current value, you're going to have to use a different resistor uh, for measuring current because uh, at resonance, if you have a lot of current, you're going to blow your resistor up because I, I squared R is the power in the resistor, the resistor is going to blow up. Uh, but for anti-resonance, you, you, need, you need a larger resistor because you want to have more sensitivity to a smaller current. But, but uh, So that's the difference. So you may need to use a different resistor for resonance and anti-resonance. Do not use the resistor that you use for anti-resonance for resonance, but if you use the resistor for resonance and anti-resonance, uh, you just won't get a good value, although you can still make the measurement. And that's one of the reasons I kind of use this big old resistor just for right now, is because uh, it's rated at a couple watts or something like that. So it's not going to blow up on me. Probably not. Um, so, um, thank you for watching. Um, look forward to seeing you in the next video.